loves welcome back to the fiesta if you're new here my name is Keishana Dupuy and if you're not uh -huh, you're loyal don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell below if you're interested in seeing more hair or skin product reviews tips tricks and advice I mean if you haven't noticed your girl's hair is straight and yes I am feeling myself yes 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 the question of the day though is did I get a blowout you know, Dominican hair salon, just salon blowout. Or did I get a soup press? Good question, right? Two, I'm gonna give you guys some info about both processes so that you guys can see what would be good for you. And as I said, guess which one I got. First, we're gonna talk about a blowout so I've been getting a Dominican blowout since I was about seven meaning my mom started taking me to a salon that was ran by Dominican women so all Dominican hairstylists and they call it a blowout so I would get a wash and set and a blowout the typical process of a Dominican blowout is a wash I would add on a deep conditioner scalp treatment situation be set is when after the washing they'll do some parts and roll your hair in the rollers and put you under the dryer for what feels like a good two hours really it may have been like a good 40 minutes to an hour but it always felt so long especially when they put it on extra long because they know that they're going to be talking and eating and ignoring you so then you sit under that dryer for just a bit longer then it followed up with the actual blowout. Them Dominican ladies, I, they are beasts with the, the blow dryer and the little blow dryer roller brush. Beast. So that is what that process would usually consist of. For me, I usually didn't like the, the way that my hair still was left a little more on the poofy side. So I always ask for them to straighten it on top of the blow dryer. So like blow dry it. It would already be kind of straight and flowy, but then I would still ask them to go through with the straightener. Yeah, I wanted to leave there like just, ugh. So here are the pros and cons of getting a Dominican blowout. I like to start my cons, always ends on pros, because we're positive on these sides. So cons of a Dominican blowout. For years, my hair was perm, and it really wasn't until I went natural that I started paying attention to my hair's reactions to things from everything from a product to an actual process such as blowing it out, straightening it. And once I did that, one of the main cons for me when it comes to getting a blowout, a Dominican blowout, is the extreme amount of heat that they use in the entire process. All the way from putting the head dryer on high to the blow dryer on high to the straightener on 400, but really, I don't even know if it counted 400 because they used the old school one that was in the little the little plate and then take it out and then press my hair. My hair will literally be smoking. But once I went natural, I started to really care about the the heat that was being applied to my hair. And I, it was kind of hard to get that communication open with them to be like, I know you're used to just applying all type of whatever to my hair and I always let you, but now I need you to put some care into this and not burn my hair. You know, I don't want to see it smoking and the hair it sizzling and all this craziness. I, opening that communication was really difficult, which brings me to my next con. Unfortunately, and th this could be a whole other discussion about Hispanic culture. I heard of it before, but once I went natural, I myself could feel the disrespect or dislike of natural hair. First time I walked in there with my fro, with my curls, they were like, Oh no, mommy, what you do to your hair? Like, what is this? What are we gonna do with this? Ooh, baby loves, y'all know, the dry detangle. So I could really tell that there was a dislike for my new hair and that felt uncomfortable because then I were pretending that my hair was the, like the craziest, snappiest, coarsest thing in the world. They were shocked every time that it softened once detangled. 
very weird, really annoying. So those are both my cons of getting a lot, but not these pros. As I said, as a Hispanic mommy, it's culture, it's norm. My mom didn't even question taking me to the Dominican salon because she knew they was about to body this blowout, okay? So I loved going there faithfully every two weeks, tearing my sauce on blast, got my food next to me, and I was ready to go for a few hours up in there and then leave there on my tubi, on, you know, my wrap and my pins. I was happy. And then the price. That entire process, including whatever I added to it, never cost me more than $50. Okay, and the other pro, on top of being able to get that off $50, is as a New Yorker, at least, Dominican hair salons are everywhere. You know somebody who owns one, you know someone who goes to one, you know someone, you go to the one up the block and try them. Like So the travel to one, the access was fairly just there, it was readily available and just really easy. A little five minute walk up the block, got my hair did, didn't have to go too far looking crazy with my thubi. So basically the pros of a blowout is the cost and the accessibility. So now let's talk about silk presses. The process of a silk press usually includes washing, some type of treatment, deep conditioner, usually with heat. So you sit under the dryer, blow drying your hair. So after it's fully washed out, it's a blow dry, not rollers as used in a Dominican blowout, then followed up by a straightener. But by then, it's usually just one or two passes. And then stylists, they, they add their own techniques and tricks. So some people add steamers, they make custom hair masks, they detox your scalp, they use saran wrap to make it straighter. There's a whole bunch of different techniques that's thrown into the process based on the stylist. But the overall difference between a blowout, doing it yourself, and a silk press is a focus on your hair, your curls, your natural hair pattern. Just literal care for your hair in its natural state by using products that are meant to protect your hair from the heat and a good balance of temperature before it's applied to your hair. Like they're just really focused on taking care of your hair itself prior to adding all of the heat. Which really just brings me to my, my cons and my pros. The cons of a silk press is that it could be so hard to find a stylist because they're usually one man or woman shows, even if they have one other person that they trained or a person helping them wash, it's usually just them that gets to the actual silk pressing. And because of that, it just limits the availability that's a you know like that there, there is for a stylist also once people find a good silk press stylist they usually don't go anywhere else like once you find the person that got the hands for you if you're able to get a appointment that's another thing they're usually all appointment based because they're by themselves so it could be tricky to find a stylist and then once you find the stylist it could be very hard to get an appointment also if you even looked into a silk press, you know that just as like getting a curly cut, it is expensive, especially if you find a stylist that is well known in that realm, in the community for what they do. You don't have to be natural to get a silk press. I just know that it's more common for naturals to go to silk presses. If you find them, it could be so tricky to spend that money because I personally, the most I've spent on a silk press is $210 and it hurt, it did, it hurt to spend that money. But if we get into our pros, for me, it was worth it to spend that money because I was going to a well-known stylist that I did all my research on. I just really overall love the personalized care that comes with getting a silk press. As a natural, I do not add heat in my routine a lot other than steaming my hair or, or diffusing my hair i really don't add heat like this except for once a year so if i'm gonna do it i want the best stylist i could find and you might be spending an arm and a leg but you can get a full a full custom process here's what my hair looked like with a blowout and here's what my hair looked like with a silk press if you guess that I got a silk press, you're correct.
for me it really just comes down to who loves my hair who cares about the fact that hey i'm taking time out of my day to not only come to you but also give you my money and trust you in my hair so now can you listen to what i'm looking for are you going to pay attention to what my hair needs and not just do what you're used to or what you want to do i care about that as a new yorker as a latina as a lover of a good dominican salon and a good stylist period i have nothing against dominican salons i have nothing against getting a blow i have nothing against you not getting a silk press and whatever process you choose to go through i have nothing against it i just from experience realized that my silk presses has just left me better off because i know that i'm protecting the natural state of my hair and for me that is incredibly important and that's why i choose to get silk presses but i will say i've been telling everybody ever since i started getting them try a silk press at least once find a bomb stylist i know it can be really hard depending on what you know what area you're in but yes this 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 is it this is a silky all right if you made it this far i hope you already liked and subscribed I am not willing to give any stylist recommendations, but I am willing to share some ideas on how you can find the best salon or stylist for you and what process I usually go through when I'm looking for a new stylist. So yes, please comment below if you have any questions about my experience or if you have a product suggestion or video requests. And if your idea is selected, I'll make sure to give you a shout out in that video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back soon. Ciao.